Hi, I'm Alex and welcome to Pucks and Paper Racks. Besides reading, I really love to bake and whenever I see a book with baking, I automatically pick it up. My favorite series is To All the Boys Love Before by Jenny Han because there's baking in it, but also for other reasons. So in this video, I'm going to read three queer books that feature baking, try some of the recipes in the books and watch some baking shows. I'm not a big TV watcher, but when I do, I'm always watching Food Network. I'm currently watching The Great Food Truck Race, which is one of my favorites. But I also love watching baking competition shows, including Sugar Rush, The Kids Baking Championship, and just all of the ones that they have on Food Network. And maybe I'll try a new one. I haven't watched The British Bake Off, so maybe I'll do that in this video. Here's my TBR. Cafe Con Leche by Emery Lee I'm currently reading and hoping to finish up in the next few days. Rosaline Palmer Takes the Cake by Alexis Hall is featuring a bisexual woman who is a single mother and she is on a reality TV baking competition show. And last I have The Heartbreak Bakery by A.R. Capetta which is about Sid who is a gender and something about breakup brownies and the rest I don't know but I'm excited to read all of these three books. Let's talk about Cafe Conice. On June 28th, I finished reading Cafe Con Liche by Emery Lee and I ended up corrupting the footage. So let's talk about it again, which I don't mind because I really loved this book. So I'm excited to just gush about it again. This is a YA contemporary dual POV following Theo and Gabby who are both working at their parents' Puerto Rican bakeries and they're rivals. If you're looking for hate to love, this one had so much hate that I loved it so much. Just from the first page alone, Theo immediately tells you how much he hates Gabby and never wants to see him ever and strictly avoids him. So we have some Romeo and Juliet inspiration going on here as we have some rivalry to lovers and oh my god this was everything. Theo has ADHD and you really get to see how that affects his life and just affects his self-worth. He feels like a failure because his brother Thomas is like the golden child but he just feels like he can never be enough. But the root of the story is about Theo and Gabby trying to save their parents bakeries as their business is being taken away by a new fancier boba shop and they are just dealing with their parents not wanting to change their recipes and this really talks about cultural appropriation and it was so cool just to see both of them put their minds together and I really enjoyed their dynamics and honestly Theo was so amazing. He's one of my favorite characters now. I just love that brooding character who's mad at the world and just hates everybody and is a dick but then you kind of are realizing why. In some instances he's not being a dick on purpose. It is him bottling up all of his emotions and taking it out on other people and I just really enjoyed this. This is my first time reading from Emery Lee. This is Air sophomore novel and I cannot wait to read Meet Cute Diary but I am a little afraid because like then I'm not gonna have any more books and so I kind of want to savor it. But this was really amazing. I touch on more in my wrap up and I also have some reactions in my Queer Lit Readathon vlog but I just really enjoyed this. It also talks about homophobia because we see two different experiences. Theo is out and proud but he's dealing with no one really talking about it. He's not really sure what's happening. And on the other hand, Gabby is in the closet for his own safety. His parents are constantly saying homophobic things and he just feels like he can't come out. I also have to mention that this has sports involved, which I love. This has soccer and we really get to see how masculinity plays a role in both of these boys' lives because Gabby is in the closet for his own safety and he would rather be a dancer but his parents think that that's gay and feminine and so they're not supportive of him and he feels really jealous of Theo because his parents are supportive. I feel like this book was so unique because I've never seen that 
in a queer YA book before. It is rare that we see messy characters like this or a character who is in the closet for their own safety. I really enjoyed having that representation and I really wish we had more of it in YA or just in books in general because it is really important to remind people that it's not always safe to come out and I just think that that is another part of the queer experience that is really important to tell and so I'm really glad that Emery Lee did that through Gabby. Gabby does ballet but he does it in secret and doesn't really want his parents Parents to know because they're homophobic and so I really just enjoyed the way that you could see two different sides because Theo loves soccer he loves it and it's kind of like an escape for him and I love when that is told in books because for me personally hockey is escape for me <laughs> oh I just I just said that sentence and then I just thought about what I'm fucking gonna go, be going through this season if any other team wants me to be a fan of them, line up. Let me know who. <laughs> because... <laughs> but overall, if you like Boba and you like dark contemporaries, I highly recommend this. I'll have the trigger warnings down below. I just loved this so much. It was awesome. <laughs> Welcome to the first baking portion of this video. I found this recipe on TikTok and decided to recreate it. The Fallen Soldiers. This is batch one and then we're gonna try it again. <laughs> I have another batch in right now and so hopefully they work better. I'm trying to put them in a little bit less than the ones up here. I put these in for 12, these are in for eight. So we'll see what the comparison looks like. I made viral TikTok cookies and they were a fail. The caramels basically melted in the oven and I'm not sure where I went wrong. I think that they just were maybe too small. I realized soon after that I do have a fourth cup that I could have used, but it was already too late. So I'm going to try one and let you know how it is. And during my baking today, I started the audiobook for uh, Rosalind Palmer. I keep wanting to say Rosaline, and I know that's not it because I'm literally reading the audiobook and it tells me, and I just keep forgetting. Rosalind Palmer takes the cake by Alexis Hall, and I'm obsessed. I'm loving this so much. I actually might watch some British Bake Off after this, like after reading this book, to see how it compares because I know a little bit and it's feeling similar, but I'll talk about this in a minute. Let me try the cookies because I'm eager to try them. Mmm. Very, very soft. I'm disappointed. I'm really disappointed. I don't know if this is just not the good one, but the pretzel is not... 
crunchy. It kind of just feels like it's stale and I kind of get the caramel, but I feel like it kind of just oozed out. I just don't know really what happened because they were supposed to be gooey and like they're kind of not, they're hard. And I saw someone else write that as a review. So I don't know what happened here, but let's talk about something better, <laughs> the book. I am loving this so much. It's really funny. I was talking to one of my friends about this book and I was saying how the audiobook is just really grabbing my attention and I'm actually grasping it better than the last audiobook that I read. And I am just really able to follow the story and I'm not sure if it's the writing or what, but the writing is really good. And now I'm just really understanding why everyone is on an Alexis Hall kick because he is so good at writing. I am loving this so much. I'm loving all of the characters and the audiobook is just fantastic. It just really is. It has a whole cast and it's amazing. I also really just commend the author for his writing because you're immediately dropped into the world. You know exactly what's going on. You meet the characters. So this book is a win so far. The cookies, however, aren't. Hello, I'm 24% into Rosalind Palmer, so I wanna talk about it a little bit. Because I talk about hockey on this channel, I need to do some therapy because um, my favorite player just got bought out. And we also got a player who was homophobic and racist, like openly. Um, and he's been suspended twice in the juniors for racial slurs. Uh, he, yeah, he'll, he'll be great. We have just done so many god awful moves in the last two weeks and even in the last 24 hours that I am spiraling. My favorite player, Oscar Lundbaum, who, as you may know, is my phone background. Oh, he's now on the San Jose Sharks because they bought out his contract two years after he survived cancer. But to save their asses, they donated money to a local cancer organization and basically were just like, fuck you, Oscar. We don't want you anymore. And now I am sad. I am not happy at all because I was happy in the beginning. We got a new coach who was fiery and he was giving me so much hope. And then our general manager was like, <laughs> you thought. You thought you were excited. So now I am officially a San Jose Sharks fan, which is funny because I literally never was. I was more, I like the Kings over San Jose, uh, but I don't know them as well. And honestly, I should say I'm more excited that Oscar is able to get out of this fucking horrible organization that we run. Um, but we don't have anybody good well, okay, I'm not going to say that, but we haven't gotten like, a, like, oh my god, just everything that this team has promised me is wrong. <laughs> oh, nothing is working out. They got a fucking asshole guy who has a horrible reputation and literally nobody likes him. His old teammate fucking punched him in the face, straight up not having a good time. But I am having a good time with this book, so let's talk about that. I am enjoying it, but I'm confused. <laughs> so I am gonna give some minor spoilers. I'll put it in my description, but also on the screen. I'm just confused about what this whole competition is and how it works, because I'm not sure if this is supposed to be mimicking the Great British Bake Off. I feel like I'm gonna watch a couple episodes just to see, but like the competition is confusing me because I like that she is not an awesome baker, like she's mediocre and she's not really doing that good, but she has a lot of uh, self-confidence issues where she's like, oh, why the hell am I even here? Because she's doing this because she has to pay back her parents money. So she's like, oh, I'm gonna go into this show and I'll win. And this guy that she met is winning and he's doing a really good job. And 
I like that she's mediocre, but I just wish that I was informed more of like what this competition is and how it works because to me I'm thinking okay they're here for six weeks and they're not going to see their families but like but I was 15% in and I got so confused because she had been picked up by her dad and I was like wait did she lose like I'm so confused so I had to go back and I was like wait what is going on like why is she going there i'm so confused so for now i am still really enjoying it even though i'm kind of confused i think i need to hybrid read where i read the audiobook and the physical book at the same time because i am grasping the information but then i miss something and i'm like wait what what's happening so there's some instances where i have to go back and check so it's nice to have the physical book because i can just go back but like i'm confused of what this competition is doing but still enjoying it now I'm going to go wallow as a hockey fan. <laughs> Hello, welcome to my kitchen. Yesterday I finished Rosalind Palmer Takes the Cake, so I am about to make some mini bunt cakes because I realized I was reading a book about cake and I didn't make a cake. So I had some inspiration to make some mini bunt cakes. So that is what I'm going to do today while I talk all about my thoughts on Rosalind Palmer. Let's get baking. I actually really enjoyed this book. I loved the audiobook. This book made me laugh out loud, which I just loved because it was just such a fun time. Here we're going to see if I can bake and talk about a book at the same time. During a heat wave, by the way. So this is about Rosalind Palmer. She's on a Bake Off show and it is called Bake Expectations. And we really get to see the behind the scenes of her actually on the show. Every contestant had a hotel. So since she lived nearby, that is why she was always going home on the weekends, which really confused me. But then as soon as I understood that everybody else was at a hotel, I was like, oh, that makes a lot of sense. So there was still like the stereotypical of like, you can't talk about what happened on the show and all, but I really enjoyed the romance because I'm not gonna give anything away, but there is just such a great conversation going on. I also wanna mention that the author does have content warnings, but they are on his website. Currently the website is down, so hopefully it is up and running by the time this video is out. I'll have it linked down below, but that is something that I have a little problem with because I want the content warnings at the beginning of the book. I don't understand why we need to go through hoops to get trigger warnings because I was like, okay, I'm gonna write my review. Oops, can't because the website is down, which is not the author's fault at all. I just feel like getting trigger warnings should not be that hard. The trigger warnings are on the story graph, but I just feel like why do I have to go to another source when I'm reading the book? Because when I'm reading the book, I want to look back at the trigger warnings just to make sure that I'm not going to be bothered by something that's happening or just to warn myself. And so, Please, publishing, can we just have trigger warnings in print instead of having to go to the author's website because things like this can happen where you actually can't get the trigger warnings. I mean, you can go in the story graph, but you know, like I want the whole list. Even though this was a sweet book, I really love when a little wholesome fluffy book does have some good conversations, especially when we're talking about a show that has, um, oh, should I put this in a mixer? I think I'll put that. So even though this is a book about baking, it is so much bigger than that. We talk about toxic masculinity, biphobia, stereotypes of single parents, and just feeling like you haven't done enough. Like Rosalind actually is awesome because she talks about how everybody around her uses her child as a burden and says like, oh, well you had a kid young, so you can't do X, Y, and Z. And she's like, my kid is not a burden. Like this was my choice. And it is just so 
great to see all of these stereotypes being debunked through her character. Like, she was such a great character. And her kid, Emily, was so funny. There was a part where she says she's polyamorous. And I was laughing so hard. Because she's like, well, I love everybody. So I'm polyamorous. And they're like, no, that's not what polyamorous means and it's just so cool though that she was not a parent that was like oh i'm gonna hide this from my kid and she actually educates her but emily was so cute and i really enjoyed her also though the audiobook was just so great like it actually felt like you were watching the show i just thought this was such a great book because every character is unique and goes through their own things and all of them develop differently it was just so great to see a lot of like the main characters grow and just see Rosalind herself grow and just know what she wants and doesn't want because she just because at the beginning of the book she lies about having a kid and then throughout the book she kind of stops doing that but there are so many reasons to why she's doing that because she just wants to protect herself and really not have to deal with the repercussions of what other people are going to say because it can be really exhausting but i thought also all the contestants were so different and i really loved how this book was constructed because i'm like how fun would this be to write a book like this because you have to come up with all the confections and like what everybody's going to make and then what what each character would make and i just thought it was so fun because in my book that I'm writing, I also have a bakery. So it's been making me think of like different things to add. And I just thought the conversations in this book were so great. It's, we talk about consent. We talk about sexism on TV because Rosalind's like, okay, well, obviously a guy's going to win because that's just the story they need for this season. And I just thought it was just such a great conversation and how they check all of the guys on their sexism and toxic masculinity. Harry was just such a great character because he is going through all these things and he realizes from the people he meets that are checking him. There's a scene where Harry says he doesn't want to do a certain thing because his mates will see it on TV and all of the girls are just like, why are you friends with these people if they treat you like that? That's weird. So he really works through his toxic masculinity obviously it's a long process and what i loved is that the book isn't just like ta-da he doesn't have toxic masculinity anymore or he's not sexist anymore but he really learns about himself and just oh my god it was awesome <laughs> i just had such a fun time reading this i really loved the audiobook too because it really did feel like you were on the show like at the end you hear like the sound of music and all and it's like this is where everybody is and it just was so great it literally felt like you were listening to the show and it was awesome i'm trying to think if i have anything else to say about it because i did really enjoy it my conclusion on the book is that alexis hall deserves all the hype and i will be reading more of his books because this was just such a fun read it was really long but i just enjoyed every single piece of it it was just awesome and it was hilarious like i was laughing out loud at so many times and i just had such a fun time with this book so i'm really glad that i read it for this video and now i'm reading the heartbreak bakery which i will be baking something from after this should i be baking during a heat wave no but i want to get this video up tomorrow so procrastination
Hello, I've been baking all day and I'm sweating. <laughs> so the oven has just been turned off and I just need to make some frosting. But oh my God, the Heartbreak Bakery is so fun. I put on my trans shirt because I got water on my other shirt while I was cleaning up. But this is such a great book. It has trans joy and it is just a full queer cast. There's a lot of trans people and I'm obsessed. I am more in love with the world building. This is set in Austin, Texas. So basically this is about Sid. Sid is in high school and Sid is broken up with by Sid's partner. And basically, Sid makes these brownies and everybody in town that has eaten them starts breaking up or fighting. And so it is Sid's mission to kind of get everybody to stop breaking up and fighting. So then Sid makes a sorry cake and it is just such a fun book. Like I don't want this to end, but I started some of it last night physically and it is such a quick read, which I really love. But I think this is a perfect summer read if you're just looking to read about a character who is questioning their gender. Sid is in school, but does talk about heat and just Texas being hot. So I still think it's a good summer read. And I am really excited to try these brownies because they have dried cherries in them. And the recipes in the book are so cool because it'll be like, here's the recipe for today's gender. So we see what Sid is wearing. And I just think this is written so well and I am obsessed now. And I just love that I'm reading good books in this video. Um, and yeah, I am really enjoying this. We're having a little romance with another trans character and there's just so many queer and trans people that I feel warmth. Like this is such a warm book and it is awesome. Also, the audiobook is really good and I just love that we get a whole cast because there's a lot of characters here so I'm liking that I hear everybody's voice and it is a fun time. So for the rest of the day I am going to finish up my baked goods. I have to make cream cheese frosting. I'm waiting for my cream cheese to soften. I'm gonna finish the Heartbreak Bakery. I have to get some work done and then we will wrap up this video. Hello, I just finished The Heartbreak Bakery. It was amazing. The audiobook was really good. It was narrated by Christina Hammond and I just really enjoyed it. Uh, basically, this was just so wholesome and a really fun read. I really enjoyed it. I loved this so much. There was so much trans joy and it was just bringing me so much joy and I'm really glad that this was the last book I chose to end out the video because it was a really good wholesome time. Basically this is about Sid. Sid is a gender and Sid makes these brownies and people start breaking up and basically Sid learns that Sid is a magical baker and so we have magical baked goods and a lot of trans and queer people and it was amazing. I loved this so much. And on that note, this concludes the vlog. If you enjoyed it, feel free to give it a thumbs up. It really helps on my channel when you do so. And if you're new here, feel free to hit subscribe because I make themed reading vlogs a lot. I'll have a playlist down below and I'm hoping to get another one out this month, but we'll see. I'm kind of taking a little bit of a break with videos 
I just haven't really had a lot of inspiration. I feel like I made so many videos in June that I don't know what to make. So if you have any suggestions, leave it down below. And if you stayed until the end, let me know in the comments what your favorite baked good is. And if you don't feel like leaving a comment, comment a baking emoji down below so I know you stayed. All of the titles of the books will be down below as well as content warnings or places you can find the content warnings. And also let me know if you've read any of these books and what you thought of them. I am going to go and edit this video. Goodbye.